The current year is always included in maths challenge questions in some form, so I've written some of my own questions that have the number 2026 in them that I think are exactly the sort of thing that could come up this year. My name is Dr Kevin Alding and I've helped more than 50,000 students prepare for maths challenges and Olympiads over at the Mathsaurus website, where there are totally free courses for ages 7 to 18, where you can do even more of this sort of stuff. And I'm also going to link to a worksheet that you can download for free, which has all of the questions in this video in them if you want to have a go at them or share them with other people taking the challenge. So let's get on with these now. Here's a math challenge question with 2026 in it. What is the value of 2026 times 2026 divided by 2026 plus 2026? The idea of this sort of question is not to do too much calculation, but to use whatever tricks we can. So if we look at the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, that's two lots of 2026. So we can cancel a 2026 top and bottom in this fraction, and the answer must just be 2026 divided by two, which is 1013. Notice in the multiple choice options that none of these uh, was a possibility uh, as well. So you really do have to be confident that the answer you've got is the answer. And because the answers are quite different, you might also have got it by some sort of approximation. But however you've done that, uh, well then if you got it right. So here's the next question. Which of the following is a prime number? 1, 91, 1001, 1013 or 2026? It's really useful when you go into a maths challenge to know the prime factorization of the current year because they often use it in different forms. 2026 isn't the most exciting one, unfortunately, because it's 2 times 1013 and 1013 is a prime number. So going into a 2026 maths challenge, we might just know that up front. But even if we didn't, we should be able to do the question without that knowledge because we can rule out all of the other options. We know that one is not a prime number, although many people often mistake it for one. And 91 is also commonly mistaken for a prime number, but it's actually seven times 13. Uh, and you could check the factors uh, if you didn't know that already. 1001 is a number that I use a lot in math challenge questions because it's the smallest number that doesn't have two, three, and five as factors, but it's not prime. It's seven times 11 times 13. So it's important when you're checking for uh, whether a number is prime that you do keep uh, going with that. 2026, of course, is a multiple of two, so it's not going to be a prime number. And if you wanted to do this question on hard mode and you really did want to check whether each number was prime and check that, that 1013 was prime uh, without uh, having to just assume it from the multiple choice options here, what we'd need to do is to actually check that it's not divisible by all of the numbers up to the square root of uh, 1013, sorry, all of the prime numbers up to the square root of uh, 1013. And once you know it's not a multiple of any of those, then you know that the number uh, is uh, prime uh, and we could do it directly as well. So the idea for maths challenges here is that there's often a hard direct way of doing it. There might be a multiple choice answer way of doing it. And there might be some way of doing it that if you know some extra maths or you've done your preparation, you can do it really quickly as well. And I do think this could easily be a math challenge question in 2026. 2 to the 2026 plus 0 to the 2026 plus 2 to the 2026 plus 6 to the 2026. And we want to know what is its last digit. So last digit uh, problems are based on this trick or this idea, I suppose, that when you multiply two numbers together, for example, let's just take uh, a couple of randomly chosen uh, numbers here. If I try to multiply them together using a long multiplication method, I do 8 times 2 is 16. And then I... OK, I could work out the rest of what I'd put in that row. But on the next rows, I'll have a 0 and then two zeros. And when I add it all together, I'll put a 6 at the bottom here. So I can work out the last digit of the answer just from the uh, last digits of the original numbers. Now, 0 to the 2026, of course, is just super easy anyway, because it's just 0, so we don't really have to worry about that part. Uh, 6, if we do 6 times 6, then that gives us 36. That ends in a 6. And then if I multiply by that, that by 6 again, well, I'd get 216. But because of this last digit trick, I don't really need to calculate any more of this. Any power of 6 is going to end in a 6, because I'm going to keep multiplying something that ends in a 6 uh, by something that ends in a 6, and I'll get something that ends in a 6. So 6 to the 2026 is going to end in a 6 as well. Now, the powers of 2 are the slightly harder ones. If we look through those, we've got 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16, 2 to the 5 is 32, and so on. Uh, we don't really need to look at anything apart from the last digits, of course, in the sequence uh, as we're doing this. But 
we notice that we get the last digits going two, four, eight, six, and then as soon as I've got two again, it's going to repeat, because I multiply that by two again, and I'm gonna get 32 times two is 64, but again, I only really need to look at that last digit, two times two is four, the next one's gonna end in a four, then the next one ends in an eight and a six and so on, and it's gonna cycle around. So we just need to know where 2026 fits in that pattern. So all of the multiples of four are gonna end in sixes, uh, and we've got 2024 as a multiple of four, so two to the 2024 also ends in a six, two to the 2025 then is going to end in a two, and two to the 2026 then ends in a four. And to put this all together then, we just also need to realize that when you add numbers together, uh, we only need to know the last digits as well. The same trick applies that the last digit of the sum is gonna be the last digit of the sum of the last digits. And uh, we get four plus zero plus four plus six, that gives us 14, and so the last digit of this number will be a four. Can you see where 2026 is hidden in this question? It says, how many even factors does the number 2028026 have? Now, if you're in a 2026 maths challenge, you should always be looking out for the possibility that that number is gonna be in the question somewhere. So this wouldn't be uh, quite as crazy a question as it might seem to be included in there. I would be looking at this and saying, oh, I see the 2026 at the start and the end of the number. Can I, finds 2026 in here or is it uh, misleading? Well, in fact you can, because if you separate it out like this, uh, if I said, well, what if it was 2026 at the start instead, and then lots of zeros or three zeros, uh, and then I add 2026 to that, you see we get the number uh, that we started with. So this uh, number is actually 1001 times 2026, because it's 1000 lots of 2026 and one lot of 2026. And 1001 comes up in the math challenges all the time because you can factorize it with a little bit of difficulty if you uh, haven't seen it before. Uh, but if you have seen it before, uh, you can obviously write the answer down straight away. It doesn't have two, three, and five as factors, but it has the next prime numbers as factors, seven, 11, and 13. And 2026 is two times 1013. Again, make sure you go into a 2026 maths challenge knowing the prime factorization of 2016 and the fact that 1013 is a prime number. That would be a lot harder to check in the time if you didn't already know it. To get an even factor of this number, we're going to need to include two in the factorization of whatever factor we choose. And then any other combination could go with that. So I could do like two times seven or two times 13 or even something like two times 11 times 13, uh, but I can only choose each of those other factors exactly once of course. Uh, but we must have that two in there. And then it's just a question of, okay, which of these other factors am I going to include when I construct this factor? I could include just the two, I could include the seven, the 13, and the 1013. I could do any combination of those. So how many ways are there of doing that? We don't need to write them all out here. I'm either going to include the seven or I'm not. Uh, I'm either going to include the 11 or I'm not. So there would be two times two uh, combinations there that just include the seven or the 11. Uh, notice if I don't include any of them, that will just give me two as a factor, and that's a perfectly valid choice as well. Uh, if I include the 13 or not, then I multiply it by two more options, because it's each of those choices I had that used the seven and the 11, uh, either combined with 13 or just as they were before. And then I can take all of those options I've got with the seven, the 11, and 13, and I could either multiply them by 1013 or not, and that gives me another two uh, choices there for a total uh, number of even factors there of 16. So very well done if you got that right. So will this be a question in a 2026 math challenge? Well, I've written it myself, so probably not exactly, but they might ask something a little bit like it. Which of the following is not a factor of 2026 to the 2026? And we've got these five multiple choice options here, 16, 48, 64, 1013 to the 1013, and 2026 to the 2025. Now, it's really useful to know uh, that 2026 is two times 1013, and that's its full prime factorization. Here, so long as we notice that we can write it as two times 1013, it doesn't really matter if we know that 1013 is prime or not, uh, but that means that we could write this enormous number as two to the 2026 times 1013 to the 2026, and hopefully that makes this question a bit more accessible. Firstly, 16 is two to the four, so that's definitely a factor, isn't it? We've got two to the 2026 20, as a factor, so two to the four is, is certainly gonna be a factor. Uh, 64 as well, two to the six, that's also clearly a factor here. Uh, now let's look at some of the other options. 1013 to the 1013 might not have been obvious at the outset that it was a factor, but now we've written it out like this, we could see, well, if we just multiply that by the two to the 26 and by another 1013 to the 1013, we get that number 2026 to the 2026. So it really is a factor. 
and then 2026 to the 2025, uh, well, if I just multiply that by another 2026, I get 2026 to the 2026. So uh, they are all factors. You might also just have spotted at the outset that 48 couldn't work because 48 is three times two to the four. So uh, 48 is a, has a multiple is a multiple of three, it's got a factor of three, but there's no threes in the factorization of 2026 to the 2026, so 48 can't be uh, a factor of that number either. So I've given a very full answer there. If you're in the maths challenge, of course, you could do it a lot more quickly and uh, get that the answer was B and then just move on. Uh, but uh, we like to do things thoroughly in the video explanations because you can learn a lot by thinking more deeply about the questions uh, when you're preparing and when you're actually taking the challenge, hopefully you'll be able to do them uh, more quickly. I've snuck 2026 into a geometry question here in a way that they could easily do in one of this year's maths challenges. An isosceles triangle has one side of length 20 centimeters and two equal sides of length 26. What is its area in centimeters squared? So there's no diagram given to us here. So the first thing I would do is just draw a quick sketch of this, doesn't need to be accurate but try not to make it too inaccurate. So I've got these two equal sides of 26 uh, and the other side of 20. And when we've got an isosceles triangle like this, we can draw a line down the middle here, perpendicular to the base, and that will split the isosceles triangle into two congruent right angle triangles. And here they will both have a base of 10 because the overall base of the triangle is 20. So to work out the area of the triangle, I want to do half base times height. So I need to work out that perpendicular height. And we can do that now with Pythagoras theorem. Uh, and that's just uh, then the square root of 26 squared minus uh, 10 squared. So you could do this calculation uh, directly, uh, which would give us 676 minus 100. So we're looking for the square root of 576 here. And you could work out or check uh, that that's 24. Now, ideally in a maths challenge, you wouldn't do that arithmetic you would have a faster way of doing it. And Pythagorean triples come up all the time in math challenges, especially uh, these two simplest ones. Uh, Pythagorean triples are whole number solutions, integer solutions to Pythagoras, um, the, the Pyth Pythagorean equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, so knowing that these two come up a lot, three, four, and five, because three squared plus four squared is five squared, and five, 12, 13, uh, 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared, you can check that. Uh, but also any multiples of those also work as Pythagorean triples. So for example, I can multiply that second triangle by 2 and get uh, 5 times 2 is 10, 13 times 2 is 26, and 12 times 2 is 24. And so if you spotted 26 and 10 in this question, you might, before you go into any calculations, just do a quick check. Oh, is this a multiple of any Pythagorean triple uh, that I know usually one of these uh, two uh, will be it or otherwise you'll have to do the calculation. You could learn a few more as well, but those are the two that come up the most often. However, we've got the height there of 24. We then know that the area is the half, half times the base times the height. So half times 20 times 24, looking at that original triangle. Half of 20 is 10, 10 times 24 is of course 240. And so we get an answer of B, 240 centimeters squared. I think this would make a nice 2026 uh, math challenge question because the numbers don't work out too badly in it. What's the angle between the hands of an analog clock at 2026? And in case you didn't know what an analog clock is, I have included a diagram here. So the first thing we want to do here is to think, well, 2026 is a 24 hour time. What time is that on a 12 hour clock? Well, that would be 826. Uh, so the minute hand would be here at 26 and the hour hand would be here somewhere between the eight and the nine. And that's the bit that makes this question a little bit tricky. So let's think about the angles. We've got 360 degrees in a full uh, turn. And so between each of the hour markings on the clock here, the angle is 360 divided by 12 or 30 degrees. So any of those uh, angles between the one and the two, between the two and the three and so on will be 30 degrees. What about the minute uh, divisions then? Well, there's five minutes in each of those. So 30 divided by five gives us six degrees for any of the distances, any of the angles between, the, uh, between each minute. So we've got this distance here between the six and the eight, or I should say an angle, um, which is going to be 60 degrees that we would turn through. And then there's four minutes here uh, so that would be four lots of six or 24 degrees. And then we've just got to work out where will the hour hand be between the eight and the nine? 
Well, we're at 26 minutes past the hour, so it's going to have gone uh, that fraction of the hour through those 30 degrees. So 26 sixtieths, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, is going to have gone 26 sixtieths of that 30 degrees. And we don't have to do any complicated calculations here, just move the fractions around. It's the same as 30 sixtieths of 26, and 30 sixtieths is one half. So we've got one half of 26 here, which is 13 degrees. So we just have to add all of those together. 24 plus 60 plus 13 gives us an answer of 97 degrees. And the answer there is E. So well done if you got that right. Maths challenges do like to include tongue twisters, wordy questions to make things a little bit more fun. And this is one that I've made up that could come up in 2026 with 2026 all over, all over it. So on the 1st of January 2000, six 26 year old nurses were in a maternity ward with 20 26 year old mothers and 26 newborn babies. They all lived happily and healthily until the 1st of January 2026, uh, hopefully a lot longer. Uh, what was their average age on this date? Well, there are two ways you could do this. You could do it directly, or you could take a slightly sneaky route through it, and let me show you both. We know that in 2026, those six 26-year-old nurses will now be 52 years old, so their total age will be six times 52. Similarly, those 20, 26 year old mothers will also be 52 years old, so there'll now be 20 of them uh, that are 52 years old, so I could add on 20 times 52 to get the total ages here. And those 26 newborn babies will all be 26 years old, so they will be 26 times 26 in total. So to get the average age, I just need to divide that by the total number of people. So that's the six nurses, the 20 mothers, and the 26 newborn babies, and we could calculate this. I wouldn't want to do the full calculation here. I would want to spot uh, where I can combine terms and simplify nicely. So six lots of 52 plus 20 lots of 52 gives me 26 lots of 52. And I'm gonna add that to 26 lots of 26, and the number on the bottom here is 52. Uh, so again, I've got a common 26 here. So I've got 26 times 78 on the top divided by 52. And we could say, well, 26 over 52 is a half. Uh, so this is the same as 78 divided by two, which is 39. And we haven't done too badly in the calculations, but there's an even more efficient way of doing it than this that takes advantage of those newborn babies being zero years old at the start of the problem. Why not instead work out the average age in the year 2000 on the 1st of January 2000, where this question starts? Because it's a much easier calculation. In 2000, we've got six 26 year olds, we've got 26 20 year olds, and we've got 26 zero year olds. And the nice thing about this is that those zero year, zero year olds then just disappear from the calculation. We still divide it by 52, because that's how many uh, people there are there. But now I've just got to do six times 26, plus 26 times 20, that's 26 times 26, all divided by 52. And by the same trick, 26 over 52 is a half, so we just get 26 over two, uh, which is 13. So in the year 2000, the average age was 13. Well, they're all getting older at the same rate of one year per year. Uh, so 26 years later, their average age is just going to be an extra 26. So 13 plus 26 gives us 39 for an even more uh, efficient answer. So well done if you got this. Uh, either way, always make sure when you do a maths challenge question, you see if there's another way of doing it. You can learn so much by not just racing through the questions, but thinking about if there are other ways of thinking about the question, and uh, then you become a real expert. Now, if you're preparing for maths challenges in 2026, don't stop there. Go to the Mathsaurus website. You can practice loads of free real pass paper questions with my video hints and solutions, or take a look at this video here on YouTube, where I'll talk you through two really important right angle triangles that come up in these challenges all the time.